session two, we, which we are going to start, it will it focuses on the messages or the safe practices which are to be told to the community and they aim at prevention of the disease and its spread in the community. So it will focus on hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, social distancing or physical distancing and the high risk groups management. Next slide, please. So after the session, the participants will be able to explain what are the prevention practices in the communities and the households and will also be able to prepare a checklist of the preventive actions to be taken by people at home and at public places. Next slide, please. So let us understand something about the COVID-19 disease. You already had one presentation. So what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is a disease caused by the coronavirus and coronavirus is a kind of a respiratory virus and is related to the SARS family of viruses and it is named as the SARS-CoV virus 2. Uh, so now what are the symptoms of the COVID-19? As we have discussed, it is a respiratory virus and the symptoms include fever, cough and difficulty in breathing. These are the symptoms which are like, you know, uh, ha which happen also in the other flu-like uh, illnesses. But very pertinent here is that an, a history of exposure to a contact or a lab-confirmed case of COVID-19 who's positive is very important or any history of international travel or the history of exposure to a person who has come back after traveling from a COVID-19 affected country. In case someone develops these symptoms and also has a positive exposure history, the person should immediately self-isolate himself and call the state helpline number or the Ministry of Health, Government of India's helpline number and follow the instructions. Next slide, please. So now we'll talk about the modes of transmission. It is important to understand the mode of transmission because our preventive strategy is based on breaking the chain of transmission. So if we know the mode of transmission, then we have to take the actions accordingly. Uh, Dr. Tanzin has already explained that the mode of transmission are through the large droplets when a person coughs or sneezes. So these large droplets, they can either land on some surface or they if the person is not following respiratory etiquette and he uses his like hand only and this hand it gets contaminated from the droplets and if somebody shakes hand with that uh, another person who's susceptible the virus can be transferred to that person also if the infected person touches some knobs door handles and the virus is deposited on that surface and as we have already seen that the virus survives for a few hours to days on those surfaces and if the surface is again touched by a person and the person gets the virus on his hands or fingers and he touches with those hands his face mouth nose eyes then the virus can get into through the mucous membrane into the body and cause the infection so it is very important that respiratory hygiene is followed and hand hygiene is followed Next slide, please. So in case of hand hygiene, so we have already seen that washing hands is very important and there have been many IC material which are focusing on hand hygiene. So hand hygiene is a way of cleaning one's hands and it reduces the risk of potential pathogens on the hands to be transmitted through the hands into the body. So hand hygiene procedures include hand washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use of 70% alcohol-based hand rubs. So here it is very important to emphasize that hand washing with soap and water is notion in mind. Somehow the sanitizers are better. So we should wherever soap and water is available, hand washing with soap and water is the best strategy. 
so what are the do's which you should tell to the community is that wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 seconds especially after being into a public place after blowing your nose coughing or sneezing or use a hand sanitizer at least 70% alcohol based if soap and water is not available uh, use the hand rub to cover all the surfaces of your hand and rub them together until they feel dry what are the don'ts don'ts we have already discussed because hands can have the infection or the germs which can lead to the infection um, into the body so you should avoid touching nose eyes mouth with unwashed hands and avoid touching the high touch surfaces like door knobs door bells elevator buttons hand rails support handles chair back atm surfaces mobiles jeep handles and we should have some other alternate way of handling this like you know pushing with the elbow or uh, using your legs feet to push the doors next slide please so when we talk of the respiratory hygiene respiratory hygiene is a combination of measures taken to stop the spread of germs through respiratory behaviors like coughing or sneezing uh, one of the uh, one or this is the you know mode of transmission is through the respiratory droplets or the large droplets so it is very important that a person who is having cough or sneezing they should follow or practice respiratory hygiene so what are the do's in this case to be told to the community do use a handkerchief or a tissue to cover your face while coughing or sneezing throw the used tissue immediately into a closed dustbin cover your sneeze into your bent upper arm in case you are not carrying the tissue or a handkerchief and wash your hands immediately after you have covered your sneeze or cough and what are the don'ts do not use other ways of covering your face like the pallu of the sari or the chunni or the gamcha and do not spit in open spit in the wash basin and uh, why are we uh, saying that we should not be using the sari or the chunni or the gamcha because they will not be discarded like we are throwing the tissue away and they can be laden with the germs or the virus so what happens is when they are used next time they can help in transferring of the virus into the body next slide please next slide has a case study so the case study is just to make the this training more interactive so i will read out the case study smita has gone out to buy vegetables she has a sore throat and is often coughing without covering her face you are in the shop when she comes and suddenly she has a fit of cough everyone instantly moves away from her and the shopkeeper says angrily don't come into my shop if you are coughing so we have some questions question 1 if you were a customer what would you have done two if you were the shopkeeper what you would have done and as an ayush student what would be your advice to the uh, customer and the person who has come there the customer so keeping in mind the things which you have learned the mode of transmission and as a person you are going into the community so communication is very important so the person should deal with others politely and try to give your advice in a polite way the shopkeeper should have told the customer to follow safe social distance you know at various places in the shops you would have seen that these days they they have put a rope and uh, they may try to maintain 1 meter of distance between different customers and the best thing what you could advise is when you are going into the community if there are some uh, shops which are catering to the essential services i see material or pamphlet showing all the general precautions like the respiratory etiquette social distancing measures hand hygiene to be displayed so that it can also be read by the people who are coming there and they are literate and the shopkeeper behavior was not right because he was shouting so that is one thing which has also to be kept in mind next slide please
तो नेक्स्ट वी कम टू सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग वॉट डू वी मीन बाय सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग और फिजिकल डिस्टेंस येस्टरडे ऑल्सो ड्यूरिंग द ट्रेनिंग समबडी पॉइंटेड दिस आउट दैट इट शुड नॉट बी सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग इट इज मोर ऑफ सोशल कोहेजिवनेस एंड फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द वायरस द ड्रॉपलेट्स द रेस्पिरेटरी ड्रॉपलेट्स दे कैन ट्रेवल अप टू वन मीटर मोर देन वन मीटर लाइक इफ दे आर स्मॉलर इन साइज मोर देन वन मीटर इफ दे आर लार्जर इन साइज अप टू वन मीटर सो इट इज सेफ to maintain a physical distance of 1 meter so that the virus laden droplets do not land on you so it is better that people avoid going to crowded places and if the need be going to places like for getting essential services then at least maintain 1 meter of distance between you and wherever you see a person who is uh, having cough or so it's better to maintain distance it should be both ways the person who is sick and the person who is healthy to maintain distance and avoid any social gatherings even the social gatherings like if you are going to the village for the uh, helping out with community surveillance so people can say that there are three or four people are gathering so what is the point it will not help in transmission of the disease so it is pertinent to explain them that even three to four people gathering is not good and uh, they should avoid all the social gatherings and going to crowded places and do not use public transport in during such condition next slide please next was the prevention of the high risk groups high risk groups it is a uh, group which uh, consider uh, consists of people who have some comorbidities as already explained in the epidemiology that people who are older in age they are at risk of developing complications and they may succumb to the disease then people who have underlying comorbid conditions like heart disease diabetes lung disease kidney disease or on cancer medication or any other immunosuppressants they are at a higher risk and pregnant women we do not have much information on this so it's better to as a precautionary measure to be more careful so it is to be advised to the high risk groups to follow all the precautions respiratory hygiene hand hygiene social distancing measures and take care of themselves next slide please